Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm finally back and ready to produce some videos again. So I wanted to talk about the gimbal UFO video and the fact that this is clearly not a lens flare. Um, basically the way that Mick West and other debunkers have described this is that it's a lens flare and most people who know what lens flares look like um, kind of scratched their heads like me and said what how is that possibly a lens flare and I've got a bunch of reasons so I'll just go into it um, the first reason and I guess this is one of the least obvious but it's for experts they would know this lens flares don't have this asymmetrical shape um, they especially when they're in the center of the frame um, the way that lens flares work um, and there's a very good video by this guy, Pixel Prophecy. You should definitely watch it. I'll link it. Um, they are essentially an artifact caused by light refracting inside of a camera lens. And by definition, nothing is in front of them because they are light inside of the camera. So when you see this artifact in the lower right hand corner of this craft and it goes away that's not a lens flare it's like it's never a lens flare because things don't get obscured on a lens flare um, the other thing is the consistency in the shape is just not realistic um, even if you were to stare I mean if you since this airplane is flying and rotating this lens flare should be rotating the entire time it shouldn't be static, you know, rotating like that. Um, that's just, again, not how lens flares work. They wouldn't be locked in in place like that. Um, now, the argument has been that w you can see the rotation of the lens coinciding with the rotation of the object, but that's also not true. There's one portion where that looks like it happens here in this in this portion. Oh, by the way, I animated this little uh, th this little arrow just indicates where we are in the footage, so that that way I can kind of scrub and not worry about you know trying to illustrate what I'm talking about. Um, I've also uh, inverted the first half of this gimbal video, so that's what this little yellow marker is. This just shows where um, I uh, switched over from the inverted settings to the uh, black is hot on this side and then white is hot on this side but for our analysis we're really only caring about this craft so I color corrected it and made it so that they're they're supposed to be as perfectly matched as possible it's not perfect but it's close enough where we won't really see the seam um, if we're just focusing on the important part of the video obviously um, so back to what I was saying uh, like this shape, this strange egg shape, just, I, 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 I don't think I've ever seen a lens flare that looks like that, even in infrared. Now, infrared is just another wavelength of light. There's nothing special about it. Um, obviously, as you can see from the clouds, uh, it looks like footage of a cloud, except you're only seeing the heat. You're not seeing the uh, the light that we see in our visible light spectrum, but they essentially work the same way. You still get shadowing and things like that. You still get areas that are darker because they're not getting as much heat from the sun. Um, this object is no different. We're essentially staring at a heat source, so I can understand why some people could be easily confused that it looks like a lens flare, um, but it's obviously not a lens flare. There's no such thing as a lens flare that looks like this. Um, so you can watch this video about what a lens flare is, and I also found an image, a, a PDF of like synthetic lens flares that are really good. Um, these uh, these are obviously done by a professional. They explain same as the video that a lens flare here. You can see a lot of these components when when you see all these individual components, they come from each individual lens inside of a typical camera lens. Um, so you can see how many pieces, individual elements you can get from some of these. And then if your lens is simpler, it won't you won't get as many detailed flares. Um, these are all little uh, details 
that you know no one really needs to know but one of the things it's you have to kind of think of it like almost like a snowflake the the starburst or the the blooming element of the lens flare is never asymmetric it's always um a consistent shape it doesn't change size like if we go from here to here that that just doesn't happen in a starburst lens flare like that it, plus the shape of this would mean that the shape of the lens would be shaped this way which i mean even anamorphic lenses won't create this uh this artifact, um, this kind of artifact. And the only real asymmetric shapes you do get are these kind of half moon effects that, that oftentimes they're all, they're almost always off center. They're not in the center. They're, they really wouldn't show up in the center because if they did show up in the center, they'd be blown out by, or kind of inferior to something very bright, which would, uh, be more central. They're all, all always these uh, asymmetrical shapes are always off center. They're what they call ghosts sometimes. And again, in this little uh, diagram, they show how the different number of internal lenses. That's what these are indicating can create multiple different little ghosts. Um, but it doesn't ever like that's that's like a half moon shape here. Um, it doesn't ever create a shape that's like this like. That, that isn't symmetrical. And the only explanation for it is something is obscuring this, which is what I described in my analysis video, that this is actually cold air going over the bottom right-hand corner of the craft as the craft flies in this direction left. You know, it's going, if I could draw an arrow from this to the left, that's what it's doing in three-dimensional space. The argument has been that this is a lens flare and you can tell because when the camera lens rotates we can see the rotation happen right but that doesn't always happen we in fact and it doesn't happen um, even when the lens rotates uh, like let's see from I think it's here um, there there's another rotation there of this lens where the gimbal UFO does not rotate. So you can't really have it both ways. You can't say, well, sometimes it rotates and sometimes it doesn't. If it's a lens flare that is clearly linked to the lens, then you this part of the video would not happen. So you would not have a rotation of the lens, which is clearly what this is, um, when this clearly does not rotate. Um, and that's true really throughout the video right there that 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 rotation does not have the rotating lens artifact um, and so what my guess is is in this one too does not have it um, or at least it doesn't it might have a tiny portion of it but it doesn't have the whole thing and then this one at the end clearly doesn't um, that lens does not rotate, it, it loses track as well. So one last note I will talk about in terms of lens flare is fairly important and that is that if this object is not, let's just say it's, a, it's an exhaust, which is what um, Miquest is saying. Basically it's a jet. This is an accurate representation of what it would look like if it were a jet. Obviously uh, in terms of volumetric size, this is significantly smaller than the gimbal UFO. I mean, and again, this object could be closer to the camera, um, but you're talking like the, the, the pilot would definitely have seen, you know, the distance of this object is, is not far enough that um, this pilot would not have noticed that it was a jet. Um, not only that, but uh, you, you, you can't really get, uh, let me just increase the size of this. Um, I have actually tried to animate this to best represent the best case scenario. Um, and no matter what, you would see things like wings and you would see the cockpit. And uh, the other thing is too, is that all of, all of America's jets have twin engines at the back. So there's never really a point where you're flying into a jet 
and you wouldn't see two engines. Um, you can find video of, you know, jets and infrared, and it looks basically like you would expect. There's, there's a colder cockpit area, um, but they're all in the frame. It like there's no there's no scenario where there we would we don't see any of that, f given the amount of rotation. So in other words, <clears throat> let's just take these rotations off. Um, in other words, this is what realistically would happen if if it was a jet flying directly, you know, straight like jets do. Um, then we would see a change when we turn around, you know, when we when we go around from 54 degrees to negative six degrees. I, it's a little off because I've got the jet in there instead of uh, instead of the UFO. Um, but I'm just illustrating this. Um, when we go from here to here, we would see this change in a jet. In other words, we would see a turntable of the object, you know, a portion, at least 30% of it rotating. Um, this object does not do that. Like, I don't know any other way to say it, but it obviously doesn't do that. It's a circular object. We can tell it's in the video. Um, another thing I just wanted to show was I also put an A380 in there just so that we see a commercial jetliner. This almost matches a little better um, just because of the size. The problem is is that again unless this object twists and starts to fly sideways in some in some capacity um, there's no way this is even a flare from commercial jetliner. The other the other factor too is that commercial jetliners have engines off the side, not in the center. And this lens flare is clearly a center lens flare, like it's flaring from the center. Um, here, let's just increase the size again. Um, you clearly see a change in the sources of heat. So if this was a commercial airliner or something like that, some kind of large aircraft, you know, a jet bomber or something, you would see the individual heat sources. Um, we don't see that because there is no, there is only one heat source and that is the craft itself.